This video will cover checking the quality and the fitment of my 18x11 weld racing wheels. To fit 18x11 wheels on my 92, I used 6 inches of backspacing in the front and 6.5 and inches of backspacing for the rear. Please note that these numbers will vary from car to car. My first step is to weigh all the wheels, and it looks like each of the four wheels weighs in about the same. Check for any defects from shipping, such as dents or bent parts. Check the specs of the wheels, such as the width, diameter, and backspacing. The factory lug nuts are a bit too large for the 60 degree tapers on the weld racing wheels. I instead used a small acorn lug nut that fits perfectly. A socket for a 19 mm lug is almost too big to fit in the wheel, so the acorn nut's small splined socket is perfect. Unfortunately, the spline socket doesn't have a half inch drive so I had my buddy weld it to a 21 mm socket. The first step is to remove the factory wheels. I'll be lowering my car, so I trimmed off about 3 8 of an inch off my front bump stops. The weld racing hubcap doesn't fit over the stock hub, but since I'll be using a small 5 8 spacer on the front, it fits just fine. The hubcaps are a bit loose and keep falling out when the wheel is removed. Some electrical tape fixes that issue. Carefully install the wheel. I have about one and a half inches of room between the spoke and the brake caliper, and my extended ARP studs have enough threads showing. Turn the wheels lock to lock and check for any fitment issues. It looks like my wheels clear the strut and my bump steer kit. I then had my autocross tires mounted. These are a 295 30 18 that are bigger than most 315 tires, but every tire is going to be a little bit different. Every tire manufacturer has a different idea of what a 315 width should be. The build date of all four tires is in the 15th week of April 2020. The counterweights don't like sticking to the polished aluminum, so an easy trick that I was shown was to use HVAC tape to secure the weights. I removed my front springs and will continue to check for tire clearance at all ride heights. It looks like the last quarter of a turn of my steering wheel has a bit of tire rubbing. I made my steering stops modular a long time ago by drilling out the factory rivets and installing bolts in their place. To extend the bump stop, I put some spacers behind the steering stops. Moving on to the rear of the car. Lower the axle down to match droop and check for any interference. I then removed my old Kony shocks. Please note that maximum droop changes depending on what rear shock setup that you currently have. Lower the axle a little bit more and then remove the springs. Install the wheels and jack up the axle all the way up until you hit the bump stops.
it looks like I have plenty of room between the fender and the tire. I removed the bump stops and cut off about 3 8 of an inch. I'll be using a small 200 thousandths spacer in the rear just to be safe. After jacking up the axle, I now have an even smaller gap in between the fender, but nothing is hitting. Remove the rear sway bar links. With the springs removed, but the shocks installed, I jacked up just one side of the axle. This is just a test to see what rubs when the axle is at an extreme angle. As you can see, this isn't really an issue because the amount of axle tilt required to make the wheels rub is extreme and it will never see this during normal use. Because I lowered my car, the next step is to center the pan hard bar. Torque the lug nuts multiple times. New wheels will wear in and the lugs will loosen. I don't mean to brag, but these wheels look fantastic. I didn't find any issues on the test drive, although my tires will need to be broken in for about 100 miles or so. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe and follow me on Instagram. And I'll have more videos on these wheels coming up soon.